Welcome back to another episode. During the course of working on Stories Lost, we have received a fair share of comments from you, the viewers, and it is clear to us that one name has kept coming up. Björkvik. Björkvik is a small town in central Sweden. With its 436 inhabitants, it is best known for the fact that former Swedish Prime Minister Goran Persson used to hold his political party's summer speeches there. But as we are going to discover this week, it could be said that there are also more things sinister lurking over this seemingly peaceful place. When we suddenly got an until now unheard report from one of our viewers, we decided that we needed to tell the stories of Björkvik. This episode owes a lot to the documentation made by the organization UFO Sweden. We encourage everyone to support their mission on documenting reports of the unknown. UFO Sweden has the world's biggest archives of the unexplained. See the link in the description. Now, for the first time, Stories Lost will tell a story from a mysterious sighting that makes an additional puzzle piece to the famous incidents at Björkvik that have never been published before. This is a recount of a series of events that make up a pattern that is hard to ignore. Are these testimonies circumstantial, or do they point to something unexplainable and unearthly? Like always, I'll let you be the judge. However, in order to understand the full extent of this mystery, we need to start at the beginning. It is an early Saturday in September 1989. It's just after 6 p.m. Shersten Janssen and her 13-year-old daughter Tina, who is sitting in the back seat, are traveling in a car. They have just dropped off a friend of Tina's at the bus station in Björkvik. Shortly after they turn onto a road called Sandviksvägen, Shersten notices something strange hanging above the trees a little way down the road. Shersten draws Tina's attention and points out what she sees. The car approaches the location of this unexplained sight. Shersten halts the car when it reaches a point where a large disc-shaped metallic object is hovering completely motionless just above the treetops. Fear grips her daughter Tina, who tells her mother to continue and drive back home. Shersten rolls down the window. Meanwhile, the object remains completely silent. Shersten estimates that the object has a diameter of 15 meters and that it is about 15 meters up in the air. On the underside of the object, they see three lights flashing irregularly in red, yellow, and green. Shersten opens the car door and puts her foot down to get out of the car. Tina shouts, you're crazy, you can't. Churston stops herself. At the same moment, the object starts to rotate and floats out over the road. Tina starts crying and throws herself into the back seat. Churston can now see the object from the side and sees that it has a dome with yellow windows. The object quickly floats back over the treetops and then sets off at a tremendous speed out over the nearby Lake Ingaran. Churston now quickly drives home and when they get home, the rest of the family is sitting at the dinner table. Churston and Tina tell them what they have been through, but the others find it hard to believe them. Churston's husband, Stura, sees that Tina is very pale and realizes that something must have happened. Stura says at a later point, they were upset when they came home. Tina was absolutely terrified. Stura feels he has no reason to distrust his wife and daughter. They don't usually make up stories, he says. The information about the 1989 sighting came to the attention of the organization UFO Sweden five years later, when a representative gave a talk about UFOs in Björkvik in 1994. Churston then told them that there were more witnesses to this sighting. Firstly, her daughter had spoken to a classmate who had seen the same object. However, the classmate was unwilling to talk to UFO Sweden about the sighting. Churston also spoke of a neighboring couple in the area who were also said to have seen the object, but they have since moved away. We fast forward to July 27, 2008, when an anonymous report is received by UFO Sweden that can quickly be linked to the 1989 sighting. The anonymous submission to UFO Sweden recounts the following events. It so happened that we were sitting in the car, me, my sister, and mom, on our way home when we suddenly saw something strange on the left side of the road. We were traveling north-northwest with Lake Ingren on our left. My sister screamed first and pointed to a strange dark cloud over the middle of the lake. When I looked out, I saw it too. A strange oval object, completely still and unlike any cloud we had ever seen. We shouted to mom to stop the car 
and she slammed on the brakes, convinced that we had hit a moose or some other large animal. But when all three of us looked out, we saw the same mysterious shape hovering in the air. The object was huge, at least seven to eight meters, maybe nine, and seemed unreal. We got out of the car and approached cautiously, but no other car passed by to see what we saw. We stood there, transfixed by the sight that was unlike anything we had ever experienced before. We tried to make sense of what we were seeing. Was it a zeppelin? A balloon? An airplane? But nothing made sense. After a while, the object started to move. It was dark, dull, and flashed faintly underneath, but we were still too far away to make out the details. Suddenly, it disappeared with a jolt, without a sound or any ripples on the water below it. Before this, the craft had been hovering just above the treetops, and the disappearance was so bizarre, we could hardly believe our eyes. All evening, we talked about what we had seen, puzzled and confused by the inexplicable event. Sometime after the September 1989 sighting became public knowledge and attracted media attention, in October 1994, another report reached UFO Sweden. This time it was from a woman, also in Björkvik, who described a similar sighting several years earlier, in the spring of 1981 or 1982. The woman, then 15 years old, was at her home about 150 meters from where the mother and daughter, Churston and Tina, had made their sighting in 1989. At 3 p.m., the young girl remembers how she suddenly heard a sound similar to several fighter planes. Curious and worried, she went to the window to see what was happening outside. Outside, in the cool de sac in front of her home, she saw a circular craft that had several light sources along its outer edge. The lights shone in different colors, red, yellow, white, blue, and green. The craft, which resembled a classic saucer, was estimated to be around 10, 15 meters in diameter. Puzzled and horrified, she stood there for 30 to 60 seconds looking at the mysterious object, frightened by what she saw, before she pulled down the blinds and went back into the house. She never saw the object disappear. The woman's experience helped to further strengthen the mystique surrounding the strange phenomena in Björkvik. A lot was going on in and around Björkvik, so much so that UFO Sweden decided to make a visit, knock on doors and talk to the people living there, and listen to their observations. The following stories were gathered at that time. On a winter day in 1987, sometime between 4 p.m. and 5 p.m., a 13-year-old boy was on a small slope near his home, just north of Björkvik. He was skiing with his brother and a neighbor. Suddenly, the boy fell and ended up on his back in the snow. When he looked up, he saw something that took his breath away. A large, round, disc-shaped object hovering directly above him. Shocked, he realized that his brother and neighbor also saw the mysterious object. It seemed to be hovering very close to the ground, but despite its proximity, no sound was heard. After a few seconds, the object started moving away, towards Björkvik. The boy followed it with his eyes, and saw a spherical reddish glow appear on the horizon. Terror gripped all three of them, and they ran from the scene as fast as they could. It turns out that this boy was a classmate of the girl Tina, who observed the similar sighting in September 1989. Although he is unsure of the exact date of the incident, he remembers that he was perhaps younger than 13, and that he had received the skis as a Christmas present. This places the incident sometime after Christmas, Although it is unlikely that this sighting has a direct temporal link to the reports from 1989 or 81-82, it remains a puzzling mystery. Was it the same object seen on the other occasions? Despite the uncertainty surrounding the details, this sighting remains an important part of the enigmatic story of Björkvik and its sky. One evening around 1989, a couple was out for an evening walk in Björkvik when something strange caught their attention. In the sky, in the direction of Lake Ingeren, a discus-shaped light hovered, motionless and mysterious. The couple was standing in a playground near the gas station, about 500 meters west of where Sherston and Tina made their observation. Fascinated and puzzled by the size of the object, the couple tried to estimate its extent. The man took out a 20-centimeter ruler he had in his pocket, 
but quickly realized that the ruler was not long enough to cover the object even at arm's length. The strange object hung motionless in the air before slowly moving away in a northerly direction, making a faint humming sound. They are convinced that they may have witnessed the same strange object that Sherstein and Tina saw in September 1989. Unfortunately, they are unsure of both the year and month, so the connection remains a mystery. It was a Tuesday evening in late August, probably in the 1990s, just after 22 p.m. Bo had left a dance party at Broby and was sitting out in the woods around Endebol, north of Ingerin. As a hunter, he was casually scouting for game whenever he had the opportunity and the inclination. However, this late evening, what should have been a quiet rest from the buzz of the social scene suddenly took a completely unexpected turn. It was 2210 when I saw a ball come up from the south and move over the treetops, then disappear some distance away. The whole sighting took maybe 20 to 25 seconds. Then, maybe a minute later, a similar orb appeared in the same place, followed the same path and disappeared in the same place as the first one, says Bo. He describes the orbs as round and luminous, as big as the sun but not as dazzling. The weather was clear and it was still quite bright outside. I would really like to know what it was I saw, he says. This mysterious experience, which took place in the middle of a calm and clear evening, remains a mystery to Bo and others who have experienced similar phenomena in the area. One evening around 1994, a mother and her daughter were at their farm, about seven kilometers southeast of Björkvik, ready to pick up and leave by car. The mother sat down in the driver's seat. Suddenly, the whole car started vibrating and shaking. At that same moment, the mother heard her daughter shouting from outside. She got out of the car and saw an intense white light above the house. The light, which was round or oval, was so big that it covered the whole building. A roaring sound, reminiscent of an idling truck but much louder, filled the air. The mother rushed inside to call her neighbors, only to discover that the phone line was dead. No tone could be heard. She estimated that the object was hovering at a height of 10 to 20 meters above ground. After a while, the light moved to the neighbor's yard, about 100 meters away, where it stopped briefly before shooting off to the east at an incredible speed. The whole event lasted between 5 and 10 minutes. There were more reports obtained during the door-knocking session. Check out the report Project Ingerin by Johan Gustafsson on UFO Sweden to read about them. Through the comments section here on YouTube, a viewer reached out to Stories Lost. He had information to add to this case file and wanted to pass on to our audience an observation he had made in Björkvik. Let us listen. My mother has a house outside Björkvik, where I have spent many years exploring the incredible natural surroundings. I have a strong interest in both nature and space, and I have worked as a fly fishing guide, growing up in the woods and around the lakes in the area. I also do amateur astrophotography and spend many nights observing and photographing the night sky. Björkvik is quite special, because almost everyone you meet there has seen something strange or other. My mother has worked with elderly people, and I have been lucky enough to meet many of these people, almost all of whom had a story or two to tell. Unfortunately, most of these older people are no longer with us. I have seen many strange things in the sky in Björkvik, but one event really stands out. On August 13, 2022, after a very long day of farm chores like tending the garden and taking care of the ducks, I was sitting on the porch smoking a cigarette. My mother was inside, but it was almost three in the morning and I was the only one outside. Through the branches of our big oak tree, I saw what I first thought was the moon. It was about the size of a coin and had a cold blue glow, but suddenly it started moving obliquely downward at a 45 degree angle. I thought at first that I was just tired after a long day of hard work. Then I quickly realized that the moon at that time should be on the other side of the house. Looking up, I saw that the cold blue light had become slightly larger and was definitely continuing to head obliquely down towards the yard. I was now convinced and excited that I might for the first time see up close a meteorite strike. I quickly got up and ran to the back of the yard, keeping my eyes on the light, which was now moving at a faster pace at the same 45 degree downward angle. I thought that not only would I see an incredible meteorite impact, but that I might also be able to find the meteorite in the field behind the farm. But I suddenly noticed 
that it had no tail and was completely round. A fraction of a second later, the light changed course slightly, and instead of coming straight towards the back field, it was now moving straight towards the back of the farm to where I was running. In the darkness and my quick sprint in order not to miss this, I stumbled down a five to six meter high hill at the back of the farm. For the first time, I lost sight of the light for a short time. When I got up, I saw that the light had stopped about 20 meters above me, just above the large oak tree in the yard. It was about 12, 15 meters wide and covered the whole area. The light was fascinating, quite cold, but it was not hard on the eyes. It was so bright that the whole backyard looked like it was drenched in daylight. The light was completely still for maybe one or two seconds, totally silent, but it felt like much more time had passed. It was incredible, like a scene from a Hollywood movie. Just as I was thinking this, the object accelerated rapidly across one bay of the Lake Ingarin, and in a second, it had passed over to the other side of the lake, about six kilometers away. No sonic boom, no sound at all, just a total instantaneous acceleration. At this point, I realized that like an idiot, I was simply holding my mobile phone that I had frantically tried to get out of my pocket while running, trying to get the camera going. I only managed to take one bad picture before the light disappeared out of sight over the lake. I attach my bad cell phone picture which is the only proof I have that this happened to me. It's not much to come by, but this event, I will never forget as long as I live. I never reported this, because I don't want the attention, and don't feel I need to convince anyone. It was enough to convince myself. I have spent my whole life in nature, fishing and hiking, but I have never ever seen anything like this. The speed, the course that changed twice, the hovering over me, no sound, 20 meters above me. Just crazy. There is something about Björkvik, Ingarin, and the lakes nearby. That concludes our viewer's story. Stories Lost extends a warm thank you to you for choosing to let us publish your story. Thank you for the trust. The stillness of Björkvik's night has been shattered by a series of inexplicable events that would forever alter the tranquil fabric of this small Swedish town. How come the rural Björkvik has become a hotspot for UFO? Please share your thoughts in the comments. This week, I would like to extend a special thank you once again to Jacob Murbach for supporting the channel. If you also want to support the channel by buying me a coffee, see link in the episode description. I am also very grateful for all the likes and subscribers I get, so if you are not yet subscribed, make sure to hit the button for more episodes. See you next week.